Well, it's starting to cool off out there. That means it's about time to start talking about winter gear again. Let's go. Welcome back, grunts. I'm finishing up a lovely early fall overnight trip. Just getting out to the woods and getting away and listening to that. Nothing. Today is all about winter layering and a old school or old way of thinking in winter layering that is actually making a comeback and I think you're going to understand exactly why. If you've seen my winter layering videos you are familiar with this. This is the Army ECWCS level one base layer. We call it the ninja suit. This is the ninja top. It's a very light thin mostly breathable synthetic base layer that you're going to wear under basically everything else. This is designed to go next to your skin. Why? Well, the theory is it has some kind of moisture wicking technology in it that brings the moisture away from your skin, that turns into vapor, it comes through this and starts to come outside of the rest of your system. Now, for the most part, that works. If you're wearing most levels of the ECWS system and you're actually conducting movement out in a very cold environment, you will actually start to see frost form on whatever your outer shell is. That means the system is working. But if you have ever actually conducted heavy activity in this system, heavy ruck march, movements to contact, and you have to wear those layers, otherwise when you stop moving you freeze, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. After a while, this thing begins to get soaked. And so you start to question if this is the best way to go. Now, a lot of people will swear on the Merino or Smart wools as base layers. Those can be a lot warmer and they are very comfortable. But in my experience and talking with my other fellow grunts, it doesn't necessarily mitigate the moisture that you're going to accumulate. And in fact, in my personal experience, when I'm actually conducting heavy movement in a cold weather environment, I can't stand the wool stuff. On my legs, I'm okay with the very light wool synthetic mixed base layers, but if we're talking about these heavy wool sweaters and everything, absolutely not. <laughs> I've done nothing but overheat in those in movement. And that takes us back to the late 80s and 90s. The Army switched over to these horrible white cotton, like long john underwear. So it was dirt cheap for the Army to make and to hand out to soldiers, but because it was cotton, it, it had little to no warming properties. As soon as you got wet during movement, you got soaked and then you froze. So looking at this, this is definitely a step up above the old army cotton stuff. We also had what we call the old finance sweater. Nice heavy wool sweater you could put on in an OP or whenever you've stopped movement for the night to go to bed and it would keep you pretty much warm down to very freezing temperatures, especially if you had some kind of system to dive into. The problem with the wool sweater was you could not wear it during heavy movements. So a, a morning ruck march, you would come out to formation nice and early like you're supposed to, get all formed up, get ready to go. You want to wear that sweater, but you can't. You have to go out there and just freeze until the movement starts. About two or three miles into that ruck, you're gonna to start to warm up and you'll be okay. Basically everybody who came out for a ruck or any kind of movement wearing that sweater, <laughs> within about 30 minutes, they were dying. And a tactical movement, guys, you can't just stop so Joe Schmo can remove his heavy old finance sweater because he's overheating. He's just gonna to have to suck it up. And in a lot of cases, those guys would go down as heat casualties. <laughs> well, so what did people do a long time ago and what is this new technology that is coming out? As a matter of fact, I'm wearing one of these newer technologies, but let's talk about the old school method. Fishnets. Fishnet, base weight, long johns. You can say it's like those type of fishnets, but this is actually the original moisture wicking material that guys on the seas wore, uh, Nordic people, people who were actually moving in extreme cold but they still had to layer up. They didn't have the choice of not wearing something warm during movement because it was so damn cold. Now, I got turned on to this technology by the Wiggies Outdoor Company. I'm testing some of their sleeping bags and those reviews will be up pretty soon. This guy has been around for a long time. He has cited old and new science related to cold weather 
how to layer, dress, perform, and how everything actually operates. Wiggies has put up all kinds of great experiments on his channel. I'm gonna link all those down below. And he's actually talked about the old and new science, the methodology of how fishnets actually work. So just to give you my grunt paraphrase version, your body produces heat, even in cold weather environments, that heat has to come out from somewhere. A lot of it you breathe out, most of it comes out through your skin. It comes out through your skin as moisture, but to get off of your skin, it has to turn into vapor, and then it has to get away from your body. If you don't have breathable material, that vapor is going to hit something, turn into moisture again, soak that material, in the case of regular cotton, and it's just going to keep that material wet. Instead of remaining a vapor and getting all the way out to the air, it's going to just stay a moisture and keep you cold. Now, the wool stuff doesn't soak as easily and it still has warming properties while you're wearing it, but you're still dealing with the same problem, trying to get that vapor away from your skin. And that is why, soldiers, when you come back from a heavy ruck march or movement, your silk weight shirt is absolutely soaked. You can take this thing out off of your skin and you can literally wring it out. And the problem is because this is on your skin, it takes moisture instead of it becoming a vapor, it stays a moisture into this. Now, with the mid-weight top, what we call the waffle top, we call it the waffle top because it has these grids in there. So soldiers or anybody who's worn this stuff, if you have ever actually skipped the base layer and gone straight to the waffle top, you'll notice a lot more breathability. Why? Because you have a tiny bit of space between your skin and that material, and that material actually breathes much better. So the grunts in the field, we actually learned that this was more just for sleeping or comfort. And if you actually wanted to maintain breathability and stay warm in extreme cold environments during movement, you're better off dropping this and skipping straight to the midweight. Just a tip for you guys. So I have two products to talk about utilizing this technology. This one's being worn. Let's talk about the original fishnet style. This is from a company in Norway, Bren or Brenya, however they say it. And this is just a standard fishnet style. Now, Wiggies does have their own fishnet long johns that you can pick up, but I reached out to this company because they have actually been around for so long. These guys seem like the masters to me. The basic idea is instead of having closed material close to your skin, the fishnet is the first layer. Now this goes on your skin. This has plenty of room for that moisture to come up off of your skin. And because all of the spacing in this material, it can then turn into a vapor and get through further on materials. Now, does it work? I've put this through two winters, doing some pretty hardcore stuff outdoors. And guys, I gotta say, it absolutely works. It works very well. It's actually amazing to wear something like this and then your outer shell uh, go out and do a ruck in freezing temperatures and just watch so much more ice forming on the outside of your shell because this is doing its job and hopefully you have a good shell that is doing its job. Remember those days of doing heavy PT and, and just tactical movements in the winter and you just always had to drop your mid-weight shirt because you were freezing when you started and then you would sweat your ass off during the movement. Well guys, every time I went for a longer run or even a ruck in freezing temps, I would leave this on and then I would just put on my light outer breathable shell. And guess what? No overheating. As long as it was actually cold enough to put something like this on in the first place, guys, it's amazing how comfortable it is. Now, this version that I have is a 100% polypropylene. There are many different types of materials you can play with. Uh, I think pretty much as long as it's not total cotton or wool, you're gonna be okay. Another thing about this is you're gonna have to get used to material like this opened up on your skin, especially on the shoulder area where your ruck straps will sit. <laughs> Every time I wore this with a ruck after a long march, I'd take everything off and yeah, you're gonna have some interesting tattoos for a while after. So just something to think about. I have a ruck on my back at least every other day all throughout the year. So it wasn't too hard for me to get used to that. The current price for this one is up there on the screen for you. I'm 5'9", 175 pounds and the large is what I had to get. So it's definitely not American sizes. It's realistic sizes. Now, let's talk about what I think is the king 
of integrating this technology into newer versions. This shirt is like a ultralight, medium, midweight shirt. Kind of like your Army ECWCS waffle top, but super light. But because it is almost all wool, it's very warm and light. This is from a company called Armadillo. As we say in Mississippi, Armadillo. Now this has been my absolute favorite, favorite winter layering item. On top of the Army ECWCS stuff, yes, absolutely. Because this is wool, it's like the smart wool, really thin woven material. So it's not this heavy overheating wool stuff. But here is what they have done. They have taken the original technology and integrated it with new stuff. So you have this wool, almost spandex feeling wool, and then they have the net built into the shirt. And it's not completely sewn together, it's just sewn together at the ends, so you've got plenty of space in there. And here's the sleeve. So it is located all throughout the shirt. There is the current price of this Armadillo shirt up there. Now, unlike the Norwegian shirt, I actually had to get a medium in this one. Um, I talked to the guys about sizing and they suggested that I was, like always, I was between a medium and a large and they suggested that I get the medium. It is very stretchy, so even if it's a little bit tight fitting at first, as long as you're not throwing it in the dryer on high heat, it'll loosen up for you. They have the traditional loopholes for you. I never really use those. I always kind of like to have my shirts up a little bit. This thing is so freaking comfortable just for hanging around like this in camp and actual movements. I would go on longer runs or, or doing hill sprints and freezing temperatures, longer rucks wearing this. And if it was very windy or we had precipitation, yeah, I would have to wear an outer shell. But freezing temperatures and I'm moving, I was actually good with this and a hat and gloves. No problems at all. And it's cool because just like with the fishnet shirt and other layers, after an hour or so of heavy movement, you actually start to see the thing starting to freeze out here because all of that condensation, it has a nice military style collar that zipper works perfectly. It's actually got a little neck protector right here just to keep that zipper from bugging you on the neck. Little details like this, that's what companies like this do very well. Plenty of neck coverage. You can also leave it you know, I like to leave them open just for extra breathability. As I said, that vapor, that heat, it's got to go somewhere. So as you're moving, it's coming out of the material. But hey, it's also good to be able to help it out this right, way. So I have another product from the Armadillo Company. I want to talk about real quick. So this is like the Army Brown t-shirt. But this is also a merino, full merino base layer. Now it's a short sleeve shirt. I believe they have long sleeve. You'll have to check out their website. Nice and stretchy, very comfortable. Also looks a hell of a lot better on your figure than the standard issue army shirts. Now, with both of these materials, we're gonna talk about grunt proof terms. How tough is it? Okay, you gotta consider the use, guys. So no, I'm not gonna drag this behind the ATV because there shouldn't be too much abrasion happening on these shirts. They should be worn under something else. In this case, we've got our standard duty top that you're going to wear this under should be protecting this for the most part and then if you're wearing this you're probably not crawling through the woods in it i did during the last year challenge but it is what it is and it held up now because i am still a grunt at heart i have worn this in many settings where you probably shouldn't wear it by itself exposed and that's how we ended up with this little tear it is not rip stop so if I keep pulling on this, it's done. I do still wear this for any kind of heavy duty work. You see from one of the last obstacle races I did with it, it still has dirt just caked in it. It's never gonna come out. <laughs> but a very comfortable shirt and this t-shirt combined with this, yeah, you're talking about some serious warmth and breathability. Both excellent products, but consider how you're going to use them. Okay, so all these products, should you dump your ECWCS stuff and go out and buy some of these things. If you have the money, sure, absolutely. But what I would suggest, if you only want to stick with the Army ECWCS, 
If you're doing heavy movement and it's still very cold outside, consider dropping the base layer and go straight to the mid-weight or what we call the waffle top and you will notice a significant difference in moisture control. If you want to go out and get a fishnet, this thing is outstanding. My favorite without a doubt is this one right here. I've worn this on just cool summer nights out here camping. I've worn it in deep winter just for camping but also heavy work where I'm actually moving around a lot. The moisture control is insane and it is so light and packable you could pack this up in one of your side pockets like your cargo pockets and you barely even notice it's there everything i've mentioned the wiggies experiments and the sources he cites they're all going to be linked down there i'm also going to give you links to both companies that put this stuff up armadillo and bren brenja brenja and you guys can go check them out thanks for watching hope you enjoyed this one hope you learned something and i'll see you in that next video out more nap before it's time to go. Long walk home.